Welcome to another episode of Modern Bach. Thank you for joining me. So yeah, today I think I was going to cover some of like just a gloss over some other games and then talk about the team changes for uh, the France and Africa game and also some I think some interesting choices from the All Blacks for the England game. So let's first go into some other games. I think really exciting games to look forward to is I would like to see Australia take on Wales. Wales has shown to be quite a dominating force this year. They really have done well, but. Um, I don't know yet if they have the teeth and depth to be able to go on to a World Cup, but at the moment it looks promising, so the Australia uh, Wales game is going to really be a good indicator of the progress and the position they are in the world stage, so that's going to be something to see, especially considering it's probably the first time in a while that they've had their real top team out to play. Obviously, the Ireland game against Argentina is great because it's going to see probably the strongest team in Northern Hemisphere at the moment, and probably, I'd say, a large argument to the strongest, strongest teams, the second strongest team in the world. Uh, taking on Argentina, who have had a great growth this year. And I actually think, Argent uh, if I were Ireland, I'd be a little bit concerned about that, as Argentina have grown hugely, and they have actually taken their game to a whole new level. I think they're Tier 1 quality now, so it'll be good to see Ireland take it on, especially considering the style of play um, Argentina employs. I think it could be quite a challenge for Ireland, so that'll be exciting. I can't wait to see that game. So let's move on to the England, uh, England, New Zealand game. I think my probably my favourite choice there is this that Demon McKenzie starting at fullback. I've always thought that he was, in my opinion, a better fullback than Jordy Barrett. Even though Jordy Barrett links up amazingly well with his brother, I think Damien McKenzie is a lightning bolt on his feet. Even in the games, previous games South Africa played against uh, him, it was every time he got the ball, six or seven players had to watch out. It was he is a lightning bolt, and I know he's small, but he shows why it doesn't matter the size of a player. It's all about your ability and your your talent to be able to perform. So I think he's a stunning find, and I really I like. I'm glad to see him start at fullback there. So yeah, other than that, I think the England team is mostly the same, and they're drawing off a great game against South Africa. New Zealand, on the other hand, have tried some. Uh, it's quite a, It's pretty much the same team that played in the rugby championship with some small changes but a massively different team from last week. But I think still, it's going to be a dominating one. I'd I, I, in my opinion, I think that New Zealand will still comfortably take it, probably by 15 points. I don't think, even though England won that game, I do not think uh, that against Africa, I do not think the, the top South African team pitched up. And I think New Zealand are, 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 are ready to, to bruise. So it'll be interesting to see. Moving on to the France-South Africa game. So France and Africa, I think the probably the biggest thing there is you can see the French team doing a bunch of changes again, and they regularly do. It's probably the hardest thing to predict about a French game is that it's you don't know what team's pitching up. They've changed so much in their coaching staff, their defensive coaches, their players, even from the team that played against New Zealand, who we were thumped in New Zealand. Um, I think it's still going to be it's so tough to predict, but it is good to see player uh, Lou Picamol's play at number eight. I think he's the answer to Dwayne Vermeulen for them, so it's good to see, especially considering the size of the Springbok uh, forwards pack. It's great to have a bruiser like that, and he actually has an uncanny ability to pop almost uh, Sonny Bull Williams like, and I think probably other players on the Africa side who can do that as well as Adkis Neymar. I don't think Dwayne is actually very strong in his popping game, even Whiteley. He doesn't seem to include. He finds a lot of space, and he can get a ball off. Without being tackled, once he's tackled, he usually goes to ground. Whereas Alkes Neyman and uh, Louis Pickmalls have a great and canny ability to find the space and make sure the player is on their left or right, just like Sonny Williams. So that'll be good to see, but I think it's great. I'm glad to see him back there. The other thing, obviously, is uh, the introduction of Camilo, Camilo Lopez. He hasn't played for about 18 months in Test Rugby, so he's on a mission to showcase and to, to redeem the faith in the coach has shown him. So I think that's going to be interesting against Pollard, as Pollard has a little bit of... Um, I'd say redemption from the previous game, although I don't think he had a bad game, and it's so hard to judge when you don't have a very strong pivotal position um, how the backline performs. Unfortunately, the forwards can make their own glory, so um, it that doesn't really affect them, and it's actually a nice thing about being a forward. Whereas the backline, if you do not have great ball from your forwards, which and also have done a great scrum off, no matter the world's best player can't get off the ground without the ball. So I think that's a tough one to judge on, and I want to say that for the rest of the backline, I have no. I have no real bad thing to say about the SA backline, except for the fact that it lacked creativity, but I, I'm putting that down to um, Yvonne van Sale. So on the on Yvonne van Sale note, as you can see, left off of the starting lineup, the top, top 23 this week. Sad for me as I am, I, I do actually know him and I think it's a, he's a great player, but at the moment he hasn't showed the quality and the consistency to, to, to stay in that position. And I see Embrus Papier coming in number in the top 
in the in the substitution mission. I think it's a great opportunity. I think he's faster on the ball, and he seems to be allowed. He, he seems to have the ability to grow a little more and to adapt his game. So it'd be good to see. I'm glad to see, and I hope that he actually gets a substantial time of game, get time out of game time. I am frustrated that it's often been a case with with Fuff or even even last week where we only put our change our scrum up in the last seven to ten minutes, which is I think not is a mistake. Here. We need to establish a strong game and then give him the chance to to recover. And I would have actually liked to see him start. So that you can give him the chance to show himself and then Faf can recover. If there's a problem, but if there isn't a problem, what's the worst that can happen? You can recover neck afterwards. We were going to lose the game anyway if you if either way you swap it around. So I think Embrus, I'm sad to see him on the bench instead of starting. I, I don't love the idea that we lose and immediately Rassi throws the the throws the whole book kitchen uh, the book out and he starts from scratch. He brings all of his uh, European players back and he tries to bring that in. And that's not how it's supposed to be. We should be building depth and we shouldn't. The problem is players often lose confidence in their position and often then question their quality when that happens. And I don't think a coach should do that. And I question Rossi's adamant and that he does it often. He did it to Robert Dupria, which I think is still probably one of the best fly in the country. Hasn't got another chance since the Wales game due to a tiny mistake that probably one of the worst ways to start a test career, but he still has shown quality time and time again in the local rugby. He played a outstanding Curry Cup final for the Sharks, so I think that's unfair, and I hope to see him back in the Bob jersey. Talking about players who have also now been questioned is Damien Willems. So also, I think he had an outstanding game. He, when he had space, he really did run ragged. He had some good moves. He kept the defensive line strong. I mean, we didn't concede any tries. So overall, he was great under the high ball, especially in conditions, in the northern conditions. But still left out of the top 23. I don't think that's right. I know uh, Rossi has said that he will give him another chance and he will bring him in. But you've got to you've got to question players' confidence when these things happen, especially young players like them in Villemse. Um to take them out completely, even though the game wasn't bad, just to bring on Villy Leroux. I'm and I'm not saying anything against about Villy Leroux, but I don't think that was the right choice. Damon had an outstanding game, and I think he should have given another chance. We need to build players for the World Cup next year. We can't depend on a few. So that's my my one question on that. Um, obviously, I do not, the other big change is bet's out for Mostert and Peter Steff. Peter Steff actually going into Etzebet's uh, position. Interesting choice. We'll see how that plays out. As I said in my previous video, I actually am not a fan of uh, Peter Steff in the lock position anymore. I know, obviously, a lot of people question that. He is a lock, after all. But he has had, he had a great rugby championship in number, in number seven. So I think he, we need to give him that opportunity to showcase that again. And I'd even say to the detriment of taking out uh, Whiteley or even Dwayne Vermeulen, God forbid. Because the fact of the matter is that he is a presence on the field and really does give a bruising uh, position, just like it's a bit would if he were on lock. So I, I'd love to see, that. I just would like to see the, the fetches from South Africa actually showcase that they can take uh, domination, they can bring that kind of force that Peter Steff did into that position. And hopefully that just lays the groundwork for a goal for us, our fetches and our back three to actually achieve. But yeah, other than that, I'm not too bad. The team overall is good. Fuff is back. Uh, and obviously that's going to be great. I think it's going to be a major difference for our creativity and it's going to be good to see. But I would like to see us grow other players. So yeah, thanks guys. I think, well, let me please just actually go through some of the predictions for this weekend. Uh, first of all, the Wales-Australia game. I think considering Australia's um, track record this year and I think Wales has done slightly better, I'm going to say that Wales are going to pip it by about five points. Uh, not much more than that. I think Australia has still got a quality team and it depends on the team that pitches up there. Australia have either got their stars um, shine and they do well or if none of the players really perform, the team falls apart. It's one of those uh, poor situations where at the moment they need to gel as a team. So we'll see how that goes. But I think Wales have got it there. I think Ireland are going to take it relatively comfortably against Argentina unless Argentina do what they do best and they really scramble well and give Argentina, uh, Ireland a question. Although Ireland are always known for battering a team to the point of out. So I think Ireland are going to take it there by about 15 points. England, so England, uh, New Zealand, I think New Zealand are going to take it there by at least 10 points, uh, if not more, depending on how England can play out the game. They showed last week that they can do that quite well, so if they can do that, they're only 10 points. If they have a hard time like they did in the English, in, in the junior internationals, if earlier in the year, they'll probably get hammered by about 25 points. So that'll be an interesting one to see how England can counter the, the, the New Zealand juggernauts. And then South Africa, France, I think South Africa have got it. I think not by much, unfortunately, but the French team is this is probably the easiest game on our tour. The biggest thing now is I think a lot of confidence has been lost. I do think it'll be about at least 10 points, but it'll be great to see South Africa do, uh, put up there at least 20, 25 points to showcase that, yes, 
We are inconsistent at the moment, but we are growing somewhere. So let's see how it goes. But thanks, guys. If you have any comments on the, uh, your own predictions on the weekend, your own players that you feel head head competitions, all that stuff, please leave it down below. Let's comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks, guys. Please enjoy.